Our speakers today are Dr. Crystal Hahn and Alicia Bumgarner. Dr. Hahn has a robust academic background in, hu in human performance. She received her PhD and Master of Science in Educational Human Resource Development at Texas A&M. She's the director of the T Team Mindset Lab at Boise State University, where their projects focus on high quality research in the field of team development and performance to bridge the gap between research and practice. She has 10 years of instructional experience in the US and Korea from K through 12 education, through university, and also within professional organizations. She is widely published across a variety of international academic literature, including the Korean Journal of Human Resource Development and the European Journal of Training and Development. Also with us is Alicia Bumgarner. She's a burgeoning human performance expert. She is a learning and development manager at Airgas, where she is a leader in the design and development of training solutions. Airgas provides gases, welding, and safety solutions to an array of industries, such as construction, food service, and healthcare. She is currently enrolled in the Organizational Performance and Workplace Learning Graduate Program at Boise State University. Presenters, please take it away. Thank you, Max, for introducing us. Thank you so much for coming to this webinar. My name is Crystal Hahn, and today we have Alicia Baumgartner, who is also taking a, her master's degree in Organizational Performance and Workplace Learning at Boise State University. In this webinar, we will talk about the steps on building a dynamics team with a growth mindset. Our goal today is to identify the difference between a fixed and a growth mindset, and is to explain individuals' mindsets and the potential impact it can have on an organization. And we will discuss team mindsets and strategies to enhance a team growth mindset. I'd like to turn over to Alicia. Alicia will present the first half of the webinar to explain the difference between a fixed and growth mindset and the previous research that supports the importance of managers' mindset in teams and organizations. Later on, I will discuss team mindsets and strategies. We have made this webinar to be interactive, so please be ready for the activities that we we'll prepared. Alicia? Thank you, Dr. Han, and thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Um, before we begin, I just kind of want to put out there that this is a no-judgment webinar. And what do I mean by that? It means that we are here to have some open and honest um, dialogue with you about this concept of team mindset. So we're going to ask you questions. We want you guys to answer them honestly. There is no right or wrong answer. Again, we want to provide a fun, interactive, informative webinar. So let's go ahead and begin. So if you look at this uh, visual right here, I'm pretty sure we are all familiar with the term, you can't teach a dog new tricks. And our first polling question, um, and again, there is no right or wrong answer, but do you believe that you can teach a dog new tricks? And we're gonna open up the polling question right now, and we're gonna wait for everyone to uh, take a quick second to answer that polling question. Can you teach a dog, an old dog, I mean, new tricks? So we have about 92% of the people that have voted. If we could reach 100, I'd be greatly satisfied. If not, I'll still be satisfied. All right, so we had about uh, 12 people, 92% of the polling uh, answers came back yes. The answer is true. You can teach an old, old dog new tricks. Today we're gonna to learn if this statement is true or false. Can you train an employee new skills? Is it even possible or is it impossible? Do you believe that a person is born a leader or are they simply um, born with given talent? To answer this question, we're gonna discuss what it means to have a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset and how both mindsets may determine how successful your organization can be. So what is a growth mindset? We're gonna open up the chat box right now and I'm gonna ask for the participants to describe this picture right here. So if you're looking at this picture, the first three or four words that come to your mind, um, write them in our chat box and, and what comes to your mind when you see this picture? How would you describe it? There are a lot of answers. Um, 
tree as its potential visions of greatness, potential opportunity growth. There is a much beneath the surface. Aspirational, things aren't what they seem. Incongruent. Those are the awesome. few words that, that people have written. Awesome. So if you, you look at this picture and you thought about, and I think we had a few people um, mention potential. Um, if you mentioned growth, if you mentioned development or resilience, then you pretty much defined the concept of a growth mindset. Opportunity for growth reflection. There are more, a couple of more. So excellent. So we have Dr. Carol Durick is one of the world's leading researchers in the field of motivation and is the Lewis and Virginia Eaton Professor of Psychology at Stanford University. And she has coined and defined a growth mindset as the thought that there is always potential to develop intellect, to increase talent, and to adjust moral understanding. So that's our definition of a growth mindset. But we're going to look at what it means to have a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. A fixed mindset is a, is a different person. Um, with a fixed mindset, they believe that their abilities are, and intellect are fixed or inherent. A person with a fixed mindset does not believe you can teach a dog new tricks. The entity theorist believes either you have it naturally or you don't. So we can start to see the difference between the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. So what do you think? We're gonna open up our polling question. Do you believe that employees can expand their intellect and talents with hard work and dedication within their organization? So we're just gonna allow a few seconds for the polling results to come in. And we have the majority of the polling results saying yes, that they do believe that employees can expand their intellect and talents with hard work and dedication within their organization. We're gonna go on to our next polling question. Do you think that employees are born with natural intellect and no matter how hard they work, they either have it or they don't? And so our, our polling question says that, no, you don't think that employees are born with natural intellect and no matter how hard they work, they either have or they don't have it. So here's the good news as Dr. Hahn switches to our next slide. Um, whether you answered yes or no, as I mentioned earlier, this is a no judgment zone and there is no right or wrong answer, you're right. You can be both. Growth mindsets and fixed mindsets can be placed on a continuum with one end representing fixed and unchangeable traits and the opposite end representing the ability for development and improvement. But we're going to switch gears now because we've talked about the difference and define the difference between the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. But so let's look at the mindset of the manager. So a manager's mindset can determine the performance of their teams and how they effectively coach or neglect the performance of their team. For example, a study was conducted and cited in an article a manager's implicit assumptions about personnel. And in this study, it was determined that a manager's perceptions and decisions about employees are often systematically biased. The research concluded that depending on the manager's fixed or growth-oriented assumptions about others, that it significantly affected the accuracy of their performance appraisals, as well as their engagement in employee coaching. Carol Dweck research found that managers with the entity theories or fixed mindset led them to quickly form strong impressions of others that they refused to revisit, even in light of contradictory information. However, if a manager held an implicit theory or a growth mindset, they paid more attention to the information um, as being inconsistent with their expectation. Growth mindset managers view others' behaviors as the product of malleable personnel characteristics, such as their effort and strategies. So if we look at this graph, this graph represents research that was conducted on managers who were given a hypothetical employee's video recorded poor negotiation performance. The managers then observed and evaluated the same employee exhibiting the good negotiation performance in similar situations. 
And as it was predicted, the extent to which the managers held a growth mindset positively predicted their accurate recognition of improvement. So the growth mindset manager looked for the improvement. They may not have had a perfect negotiation, but it improved and they were able to recognize that. Meaning managers with a fixed mindset did not fully acknowledge the extent to which the employee's performance had improved. And we're gonna go on to the next slide and we're gonna look at the individual growth mindset. So it's important to first understand an individual growth mindset before we look at the team growth mindset. So if we think back, we've, we've defined the in the growth and we looked at the manager's mindset and how it can impact the team, well, we're going to look at the individual growth mindset. And an individual growth mindset views challenges as opportunities rather than a test of an inherent ability. It also emphasizes effort invested in learning and attempts to learn from failures. When we switch gears to a fixed mindset manager, a fixed mindset manager tend to respond to failure with anger instead of viewing it as an opportunity to learn or get better. Growth mindset managers, leaders, encourage feedback. They want to promote learning among their peers and their team. As you can see, a, manager, a manager's mindset can determine how successful a team will be. If a manager has a growth mindset, then they're going to encourage feedback. They will look for ways to coach you on items that promote growth and change behaviors. On the other hand, a manager with a fixed mindset can show unconscious bias, poor team morale, and a lack of vision for their team and the organization. So now, Alicia, thank you so much for explaining the details of research and individual mindset. And I realized based on the group activity we did, um, it seems like Everybody here um, has a lot of growth mindset, and I, I was pretty surprised. Um, if you look at the reality of real managers in the workplace, they often held some lot of mixed mindset. Like there is no right or wrong answers on that, but you can observe some managers being um, more ex explaining more of fixed mindset versus growth mindset. So. Now we're going to talk about like how those individual mindset impact team and how that impact organization. So in the next slide, we will define what it means to have a team mindset and we will look at our team research behind the concept of having a team mindset and we will discuss the characteristics of team mindset and the benefits of having it. So I'm running a team mindset lab at Boise State University, and we focus on the best practices of teams to perform better and be creative. We nurture the minds at work and win the hearts of your organization. We are trying our best to um, make an evidence-based practice. So that's why we've been conducting a lot of research and doing interviews and surveys. And I'm gonna share some of um, outcomes as of now. The concept and definition of having a teen growth mindset is a new, and this concept is still being studied. But based off of our initial studies, our research team defined a teen growth mindset as a collective belief that emerges from interaction over time to enable joint learning from dialogue, experimentation, and errors. As I mentioned, the concept of a team level growth mindset is fairly new and little research has been done to show the benefits of a team mindset success pattern. Initial study was done with four teams participated in the focus group interview after an intensive design event. We have looked at the critical behaviors and processes as a teams when they develop a prototype for three intensive days. The research used qualitative data to analyze how each winning team handled the team competition project. You will see the analysis of the data collected from this research. Participants were asked to recall experiences during the de design events for three days. 
the interview transcripts were reviewed and all statements that reflected mindsets were extracted. The extracted statements were then coded as fixed, mixed, or growth mindset. Even though previous mindset researchers have not defined mixed mindsets, we categorize mixed mindsets when since statements included both growth and fixed mindsets, or sometimes it's hard to figure out the sentence, you know, whether it goes to growth or fixed. The decision of how to code each statement was made by utilizing a rubric created by our research team that outlines the, the criteria for mindsets based on previous empirical studies. If a mind, mindset statement did not fit within the existing rubric categories, the research team coded the statement with an emergent theme determining by the coders. Statements were then categorized as either individual or team mindsets based on the statement's indication that the team was demonstrating the characteristics identified in our rubric at a team level as opposed to at an individual level. The primary indicator of team level statements was the use of plural noun pronouns, like normally they say we, our, us, when recollecting experiences during the design event. During our coding of mindset statements, we found some statements refer to the mindset of the collective group rather than an individual's mindset. We analyzed 181 mindset statements by categorizing the statements as individual mindset statement and team mindset statements. After this analysis, 77 statements referred to an individual mindset and 104 statements referred to a team mindset statements. To recap, individual mindsets focused on what individual themselves can do. It's more about their individual mindset. Team mindsets focus on collective beliefs on how a team or others can enhance their processes and outcomes. You will find the extracted themes out of this study in this figure. These strategies can be used to develop an effective team in an organization. As we learned in our design study, the team that collectively made decisions together and were eager to apply feedback from others, were able to perform a successful design in the competition. For example, if they are accepting feedback and criticism in a positive way, and they make revision on their thought process, then there's more likely to have better outcome and better prototype. This was another interview study with 21 employees and managers in a large corporation in South Korea. I wanted to try the different contexts and try to see how this team mindset works. Using a similar coding method that I described, we found four dimensions and characteristics of team mindsets. As shown in table, to have a teen growth mindset, you need to postpone quick judgment about others or others' ability to perform the task and make sure to take challenges rather than have a fear of failure. Another interesting point was that people with a teen growth mindset did not fear to receive feedback from managers, peers, or subordinates. They took critique as a source to develop themselves. Last but not least, when organization had to make difficult changes or rapid changes, teams with a growth mindset did not fear for change and they tried to revise their thought process and they welcomed the change, the change um, process. Hey, Dr. Han, we had a question um, before you move on to the next slide. Mm -hmm. uh, the question was, any research on unconscious bias relative to fixed or growth mindset? Is there any research on unconscious bias? Correct, relative to fixed or growth mindset? Mm-hmm. Alicia, the article that you shared with us about managers' implicit bias, 
that's a, one of the very good example um, to explain the um, bias that managers had and the outcome of that bias influencing the um, performance appraisal of employees. And there are a lot of those similar articles, but not in intensively in the workplace area. There are a lot of um, articles on teacher setting, teacher student settings, or there are a lot of articles with K-12 settings where how teachers influence their um, students. However, interestingly, um, there's probably around like 20 or more articles on workplace setting. Good example, Dr. Han, and I think just to piggyback off of what you said um, with the study where it looked at the performance of the poor nego negotiation and the good negotiation, um, because the fixed mindset had that unconscious bias, remember it talked about that he already had um, systematically biased opinions about the person where they weren't able to revise or make any corrections about the opinion that they had already um, they had already had for that particular teammate or team member. So when the person had a good uh, negotiation, they still couldn't switch from what they already had in their head or preconceived notions that they had in their head um, prior to them having that study done with the good negotiation skills. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Another question came up. Do any of the aspects of the study connect team mindset differences to team performance? Maybe I want to learn more about this question. So can you elaborate this more? Probably, Greg. In my understanding, I think how team mindset. Yeah, so mm -hmm. as you look at the differences between the teams that um, – you scored as having a fixed mindset versus those that had a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. Did you see differences in team performance? In other words, whatever the desired outcome or objective of that team was, that it was positively influenced by one mindset or the other, or was that not part of the study? That's really good. Great question. Um, for study one that I explained um, previously on this part, this was actually three days event for the planet event. So this one actually we can tie to uh, team performance uh, because five judges rated all those performance really in detail and they had to present their outcome. And I was able to tie this team mindset to um, team performance. However, for real organization case with a big, large corporation. It is a limitation that I was not able to connect this team mindset to um, team performance. However, it was very interesting that I have um, interviewed seven teams. So seven teams has have, uh, each seven team has one manager and two subordinates. So total 21. So I was able to see the team mindset based on those three interviews. Um, but when the uh, manager had a more of fixed mindset statement frequency, the other two subordinates in that team, they also exhibit a lot of fixed mindset statements. And I was able to make a figure that um, each team have different frequency of mindset statements. So I can't really tell that that department is doing a great job or not, but there was really big association between manager's mindset versus their employees, his employees or her employees' mindsets. Thank you. That's a really good question. If you have any suggestion on how to connect this um, to a performance, you'll be great <laughs> later on, yes. So maybe we can move on to next slide. I wanna give uh, examples or direct, several direct quotes from the managers and employees from, um, please try to read the direct quotes and describe this manager or employee. 
you can open your chatting box and you can add your interpretation of this quote in the chatting box. How would you describe this manager? Alicia, do you mind if you can read this quote for me? Sure, not at all. So I don't think my team members have any knowledge in this subject area. Therefore, I normally do not assign any important work to them. The reason is that we have to move quickly to finish multiple tasks, but due to members' low quality work, I thought it would be better not to assign important work to them as we don't have the available time. Great, thank you. This was actually a real direct quote from the manager. So how so would you describe this manager? Yeah, I'm reading a, a, a lot of the chats are coming in. Thank you guys so much. Um, and it's, it's landing on fixed. Mm -hmm. Is there any deeper insight that you want to share about this manager's mindset? Like whether, you know, we don't want to judge this manager to be fixed or growth, but is there any like a real reality behind this? Do you feel like man? do you feel empathy or, you know, reality toward this manager? So I have some responses coming in and I'm just going to uh, read them out. Um, so someone put fear, fearful to fail, um, equates fixed. Mm -hmm. um, someone also brought up short-sighted. So that's interesting and, and a good outlook. Um, clearly a fixed mindset. This is a minimum management. Um, this person is more of a task manager than a team manager. Mm -hmm. um, and then someone put, Sally, this is common. This is a common response. Um, also, we have someone that put, many managers state there isn't time for development. I do have some empathy for when someone has to get a thing done and workers don't have the competence today, but this is a vicious cycle. Um, we still have some coming in. Managers who don't have time for development don't have support coming from above. Um, I believe the important word here is important. The manager would probably assign them new projects in this area if the impact was not important, but because it's important, he's afraid of failure and impact. So to me, that speaks back to when we describe the fixed mindset manager um, or in the growth mindset manager is that the growth mindset manager is okay with the employee making errors during the learning process and that they want to learn from that. Um, those examples, and they don't have a fear of failure, but to someone's point, um, this manager has a fear of failure um, because it's going to have such a huge impact. Mm -hmm. um, we also have someone that stated a manager that looks at work to be done versus leading on learning how work can be done, so a great example. Um, someone put that they have a lot of empathy. Maybe the manager is under a, a lot of pressure from above, and that does not allow the time needed to make their, time, their team more productive by upscale. Excellent points. Because as I study more, I'm kind of shifting my ideas, like why there are more managers who ha have explicit this fixed mindset, and I'm not judging fixed mindset. Is it a bad thing? Somebody asked me in the conference, like, you kind of have a bias that growth mindset is, is good and fixed mindset is bad do you really believe that fixed mindset is bad? And it was really tough questions for me because we have that reality going on in this organization and lots of pressures, as you said, from above. Thank you, Lara. And manager also fear for failure and they want to do the best. And a lot of time, if organization push the um, effectiveness forward rather than learning and there's no time resource for developing employees. I want you to do the good job. Otherwise, you make a mistake, I will punish you. You know, if that kind of culture really exists, um, which a lot of organizations may have, then, you know, it's really hard to keep having a growth mindset and um, make employees, you know, take time and develop, make sure that they develop their skill sets. So, there's two different perspectives looking at this. And also some people say, oh, it's a finance. Like we are trying to work, like a, we have to earn money. This organization pursue profit. Profit-based organization, how can we 
just keep using our time trying to develop employees. And one manager was in a human resource development department, and he definitely said, like, I, I don't uh, believe in training and development. I rather hire a good one. I will spend more time and invest more time in hiring good employee who ha already has a, you know, skill sets rather than paying attention to uh, develop employees. And he was a manager in a um, human research development and that that was pretty um like impressive statement for me so I really wanted to um have your input as well on that um so a lot of good chat like good chat box here uh which I really want to save it to my drive and reread it is there any comments coming Oh, yes, we have a, a lot of good ones coming through. Um, someone put out, want to explore further, is this a specific decision judgment or a pattern, for example, their core beliefs? Um, instead of a good, bad, or right or wrong, can we look at effective or ineffective or learning enabled or hindered? Um, someone put it, a manager job is about getting the work done through their team, which is good. I mean, it's a good point to make. Um, we have managers and leaders always have two jobs to do, um, get the job done well and develop their people as a way to expand organizational capacity and capabilities. Excellent points. So how would you describe your organization? Is it more performance driven organization or learning driven organization in terms of culture? So someone said performance driven, performance driven, um, we have mix, mm -hmm. performance driven, uh, performance always trumps when, trumps when things get tough, false dictometry, performance driven and learning enabled, uh, someone has performance working on moving more towards learning. Mm -hmm and performance adds value. Great, great to hear. Um, all these um, details mixed. Mm -hmm. We have mixed but strong emphasis on learning and development recently. Uh, used to be very performance driven only, but we're getting better. Um, Ellen D, can you explain how um, you, your organization has moved towards, uh, moved away from the performance driven? Do you see some of the growth mindset being instilled into the, your team or in the organization? So I believe it is um, partly be because of the work of my team and also um, the fact that we've been acquired by a larger company a few years ago and this company who acquired us is very development driven and mm -hmm. all company before the acquisition was uh, really about performance and people would actually be blamed for going to a training and not being, you know, working at that time and performing. So we're trying to move away from this um, mindset of performance only, no time for development. Um, so because of uh, the company who acquired us and were transitioning in becoming this company and they have a strong emphasis on development. They have great tools and they believe it is something very important. And my mm -hmm. team is in charge of um, implementing all these different tools, all these different processes that are highly focused on uh, learning and development. So we're slowly moving to this um, development mindset. And I believe we've done an amazing job in the past year. So it's a a long walk in shifting mindset mm -hmm. but I believe that it's an important work and with time and a good team dedicated to it and also support from our function heads um, it works mm -hmm. and Thank we you. see a big impact on performance too so I believe that's also how we get buy-in for all from our leaders thank you for sharing um, we have someone that said uh, performance, heavy task oriented, not allowing time for planning for improvement or learning. Oh, um, so it says Sinja's learning organization concept indicates that performance and learning are not opposites. Victor um, also took the OPPO course and probably that's where he's 
coming um, that he's referring to Sanjay's idea. Uh, can you elaborate on this more, Victor? Um, when I originally read that work, it was several years ago in a management course in a undergrad. But when we talked about learning organizations, performance is, is short term. It's, it's always short term. It's, it's short term goals. It's um, projects that I guess for an individual it would be a lifestyle or a way of doing business. Um, for a, it's kind of the difference between a business's mission statement and their value statement. Mm -hmm. It's how you do things rather than what, what you're accomplishing. It's not exactly two ends of a spectrum that you go in between, if that right. makes sense. Yes, process versus outcome. Or HRD also focuses on a lot of performance in the beginning, and they realize learning as a, another spectrum, but they're really integrated, not the opposite. So just like that, I think a learning organization concept also uh, value all those performance versus learning, and they are integrated, not opposites um, as in the spectrum, right? Okay, now... Let's try to do one more um, quote. Actually, I'm not sure if we are doing a good job on time. Actually, we do have a lot of um, time left. So how would you describe this employee? All right, so whenever I ask for feedback from my manager, he repeats his answer saying, do I need to explain A to Z all the time? Why don't you think and act by yourself? That makes me feel discouraged. I wasn't sure if I can translate it, it into A to Z because I had to translate this from Korean to English. But um, do I have to explain all the details? That was the meaning, um, step by step, step details. Like, why don't you do it um, by yourself? How would you describe this employee and like when you say, um, the, make a comment, do, are you saying like manager or employee? You can make sure to uh, indicate if you're referring to that manager or this employee member. So we have some questions. Um, one, actually one statement was, it sounds like they're impatient. Um, and then another statement question was, is this a new employee? This is not a new employee. Um, she's been uh, here for more than five years. And I think that's interesting, uh, Dr. Han. Um, the question was asked if this is a new employee. And I guess um, my question would be, should there be a difference? Um, do we treat new employees different than we teach, uh, than we look at tenure employees? Um, we're always taught in our program that there's always should be some type of continuous learning. Um, so I, I get the question, but do you think that um, there is a difference between uh, a new employee and asking these questions? That's a good point. Yeah, probably a manager may want the empowerment and, you know, autonomy that, you know, why don't you do this? And he wants to provide some little guidance so that this person can do certain things. Um, on the other hand, this employee feel that there's always lack guidance or feedback. Um, so she she actually feels fear to reach out to the manager because mm -hmm. he constantly um, share this type of um, feedback to her. So there are a lot of thoughts coming. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Um, good ones. <laughs> yeah. uh, manager equals impatient. Employee equals lack of confidence. Um, employer is employee is eager for wanting this feedback, eager to learn, but now discouraged. Um, has this behavior been going on for five, over five years or going on for five years? Mm -hmm. um, employee may have a bit of a fixed mindset, but the manager is probably not approaching it appropriately either. Oh. 
that's an interesting um, point. We have an article that someone gave us to, to follow up on about organization and performance. Um, mm -hmm. another this, mm -hmm. this is a good resource. Uh, another statement that came through is, I'm wondering why the manager does not simply offer a job aid to the employee and then refer the employee to the job aid of the employee as how to do something. Hmm. Uh, not supportive, dismissing, not doing his or her job or providing feedback. Also communication. I'm sorry, it skipped all the way to the bottom for me. Um, is an issue. It's good to, um, to think and act by themselves. Delegate, ask for their opinion, let them make decisions. But you have to empower them and show support, not be sharp and sound and angry. The employee is simply reaching out for help because the manager is not doing his or her job to clearly explain how to do the job. With clarity comes confidence. Um, so i put in my experience, it takes some time to make a useful job aid. If it won't get reused quite a bit, then perhaps that's not worth the time. Hmm. Lots of interesting points. So, like, how do we make balance between empowerment, like providing autonomy to employees versus um, you know, we normally say micromanaging is not good. Let's empower uh, employee. We do shared leadership. Um, let's give employees responsibility and autonomy to do certain things. Uh, whereas, um, you know, you give direct job aids and you follow this job aid. Um, this is direction I'm giving. Um, so it's, it's really hard to make a balance between those two. Um, is there any good strategies that your organization use to handle these um, issues? Or how do you think this manager has to approach, whereas the um, employee has to re approach to this manager? Which, is there any good strategy that you can share so a comment came in, um, mm -hmm. it, it says it does sound like there is no, not clear communication from the manager. The employee is asking for clarity and the manager's response does not seem to be promoting understanding and two-way communication. Um, someone left a good article to read. So see Goldman article about leadership that gets results um, in HBR. Mm -hmm. I believe it might human, stand for human behavior research or... Oh, how right. This is review. Okay. So it's, it has to be both ways that um, probably manager also communicate clearly as well as employee asking for clarity. Um, that's Lara's points. Um, so we had some more comments come in, Dr. Han. It said it would be interesting if the manager practiced having a growth mindset when he felt impatient with a reoccurring request from an employee. And then, so this is um, interesting also, leadership style is like situational leadership on steroids. Um, and then this seems to be a classic situational leadership dilemma. Mm hmm definitely. So as a manager, we are dealing with so many tasks and um, sometimes, you know, giving feedback to subordinates or employees that that really takes a lot of um, their time. So probably they're not putting that into their priority task to do. Um, we have a couple more comments that came through. Um, the team members could have a discussion of their individual needs from the team and come to consensus on how they agree to support each other. Well, leadership styles takes into account intended outcomes, context, and personal strengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually setting the team expectation is really a um, big thing right now. And normally they put the team charter between manager and individuals working for him um, to um, set the expectation and consensus on how they, you know, agree to support each other. And that's really great point. And Alicia, do you remember about leadership style um, article that John probably talked about those leadership style in terms of connected to um, growth mindset? Do you recall that? Um, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, there was um, an actual article that um, tried to correlate the growth mindset concept with some um, leadership styles that people were more familiar with. So it looked at the transformational leadership um, that had positive attitudes to their employees, especially when it came to employee error learning. And so they wanted to correlate that with that growth mindset. Um, and then you had the transactional leadership, that, which may have fallen into maybe a fixed mindset. Um, but this type of leadership, they only provide rewards contingent upon expected effort. So they already kind of have a preconceived, maybe systematically biased against a, an employee or uh, someone on their team. And so they're going to only reward them um, after they get their expected results back. And then there was that liaison fear leadership. And then this particular leadership style, um, it didn't fall into either category, but it did say that they avoid involvement. So it avoids involvement altogether um, when it comes to you know, directing and, and being involved um, and moving the team into a different direction. So they actually said that leadership style compared to the other two was the worst out of all of them. Excellent explanation. Dr. Han, do we have a time for another example, or are we moving towards the uh, final point that we want to make sure that um, people walk away with? Yes, we will go to a final uh, summary um, by wrapping up this chatting, and then we'll move on to our Q&A session. So. All right. So mm -hmm. we did have one more, a uh, couple more comments that came through. Um, actually, when I'm sorry, to be fair, the manager did indeed give the employee feedback, not optimal or nicely, but it was feedback. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. I mean, the style of feedback is also a key component. So how do you give feedback? Um, the style or way of providing feedback is really critical these days. So the approaches when you provide feedback, um, you, you know, of course, positive, constructive, but sometimes people can feel the uh, manager's emotions or um, emotions or negative responses behind that by nonverbal cues. So it's also important to um, put your feedback to be very um, empathetic and positive and constructive at the same time. So, um, you know, communication and feedback seems to be um, more complicated than um, it seems like. So, great, um, great uh, conversation. I learned a lot from this chatting. And it is important to note that just because you have people that have a growth mindset on your team or in your organization does not mean you have a team growth mindset. So think back to the study we looked with the winning teams. So remember that um, the individual growth participants um, showed characteristic of both fixed and growth mindset. So how can you build a team mindset in your organization? What are some other benefits to build a team level mindset? Um, I hope you can think about these questions after watching this webinar. And as a summary, we provided some useful steps to build a dynamic team. And are you and your team ready to grow? Um, try to look at this um, stand up and drive progress, out, work outside of your comfort zones, show a willingness to learn and develop new skills, set personal goals within the team, encourage out of the box thinking. So thank you so much for your active participation today. Uh, I really value your comments. So now let's move on our last session. Do you have any questions or comments? Um, so we had um, something that came through. Amy Edmondson, leadership professor at Harvard Business Review. Um, so I think is that an article or um, that she's written or is this referring back to, um, okay, I see it. Some research was done by Amy mm -hmm. Edmondson mm -hmm. on the impact of psychological safety, including several books. So he was referencing. Yes, John, that's okay. really good. Good one. Amy uh, Edmondson, uh, E-M-Y-E-D-M-O-N. 
and this SON, yeah, she's really a big guru with um, trying to look at the how to, you know, the psychological safety really works in a team level. And also Google found that psychological safe environment that really uh, impact high team performance. So, you know, that psychological safety is more like, you know, you don't, um, you take a risk, but the other people are not ignoring you or thinking you're foolish. So you value everyone's opinion and make a more, um, you know, you can make mistake, you know, you're, it's okay to say foolish thing, you know, that kind of environment really helps learning as well as team performance. So thank you for um, adding that note there. Yes, and also two types of feedback, performance oriented feedback versus coaching feedback. Yeah, we have to recognize those two different types. And um, Roger, do you know any, um, articles that you can recommend about that if you can share the it in a chatting box you'd be wonderful it's a work of don toasty d-o-n-t-o-s-t-i so you can search the google scholar and follow him and Edmondson identifies a set of 10 behaviors that support the conditions of psychological safety yeah Sometimes in a like a brainstorming phase or feedback phase, you can create a psychological safe environment. But on the other times, um, where your organization does not allow mistake, that's when you know it's really hard to um, of like do the error learning. So some people said um, in the bank, you know if you're a bank account or bank person, it's really hard to make a mistake. Um, if your growth mindset in a bank situation, like it may, you know, you lose a lot of money by making mistake is, so I really think it really, growth mindset and fixed mindset depends on the context and what kind of organization you work on and all the situation um, that you face, you can, learn by error, making errors, but sometimes um, you can uh, reflect on your previous experiences and go make a decision based out of it, um, which can be um, more a little bit fixed mindset approach, but yeah, it's really a complicated concept. So I'm very eager to explore more about this. Do you have any other questions? And Roger said, uh, Toasty has written many articles on feedback. Max, are we doing um, the last question because of your, our time is up? Uh, just to respond I, uh, to Phil's question, I do not know whether uh, Toasty is still with us or not. Uh, that would be something I believe for Grayley who is away on a business call at this time. So uh, we wouldn't be really be able to provide an answer for that that I'm aware of. Um, if there are no other questions, then we will go ahead and wrap up this session. I want to extend an enthusiastic thank you to all of our members who chose to be here today and make that time. Um, our strength as a chapter comes from your attendance and participation. So just really want to say thank you for making the time to be here and participate. And especially thank you to Dr. Han, and Alicia Bumgarner, who delivered this presentation uh, masterfully. Uh, thank you everybody for your time. As I had mentioned at the beginning of this session, it has been recorded and will be disseminated for all of our members' viewership uh, shortly. Thank you all for being here today.